guys! Welcome to a new episode of Style Revival, the series where I take inspiration from historical fashion and beauty trends and try to translate that into a modern day wearable head to toe look. Today we are going to be reviving the early Victorian era. A few weeks ago I did an episode on the Victorian era where I focused on the kind of later Victorian bustle era which is completely different from the early Victorian era that I'm going to talk about today. So we are now talking about the beginning of the reign of Queen Victoria in England which was 1837 so roughly the kind of 1840s is what we're going to cover today and it was a period where in a way women's clothing kind of simplified as opposed to the 30s that came before where clothing was super free frilly and out there and just extremely decorated and big and poofy. 1840 sported a little bit of a slimmer silhouette, especially on top for women, uh, even though the skirts were still gigantic. <laughs> the shoulder line dropped down, the waist was extremely tiny, sleeves were relatively tight, the silhouette was just extremely feminine with, a, with the emphasis being on a super slim waist and then a gigantic kind of princess type skirt underneath. So as always I'm going to do the fashion last, so let's start with the hair and makeup. Now makeup in the Victorian era was kind of frowned upon. A heavy application of makeup was very much associated with actresses and ladies who worked the night and uh, ladies of a higher social standing weren't supposed to wear makeup even though they most definitely did. A tiny little bit of makeup has been used by women throughout all the ages. Women used to wear a little bit of powder on their face to make it nice and matte, a tiny bit of blush and some kind of dark coloring for the eyelashes and eyebrows was acceptable if applied in a subtle way as was a little bit of a lip balm or a tinted lip balm. So we definitely want to go for a more kind of natural no makeup makeup look today. So what I'm going to do to make this a more modern look is to start with a layer of foundation and I am going to use a foundation that is just my natural skin color even though the Victorians would have definitely preferred a skin that is as light as possible because a light skin was a sign of kind of social status. I am going to go with my natural skin color here so I'm just applying this foundation all over my face and then I'm going to blend it out and go in with a little bit of concealer to cover up my dark circles and any imperfections. And then I'm going to powder this off with a little bit of rice powder which would have been used in the Victorian era as well actually. So I'm staying pretty authentic there. And then moving on to the eyebrows. Women in the Victorian era would have plucked their eyebrows, groomed them nicely. I am going to fill mine in. They're obviously already plucked, so I'm going to skip that step and just move on straight to a eyebrow pencil that is the color of my natural eyebrows and I'm just going to slightly fill them in. I'm going to leave the shape pretty modern and pretty close to my natural kind of eyebrow shape as well. So when I have filled them in, I'm going to go over with a clear brow gel just to set them in place. And then I'm going to move on to my eyelashes, which I'm going to coat with a nice layer of mascara. So like I mentioned, women in the Victorian era would have used charcoal-like products to tint their eyelashes with. I'm just going to use mascara for convenience. <laughs> I'm moving on to my cheeks now. And for those, I'm just going to take a rosy pink powder blush that I'm going to apply on the apples of my cheeks and then kind of blend it out backwards. And again, you want to make sure to keep this nice and subtle. And then for my lips, I'm going to use this tinted lip balm to just provide a little bit of natural shine and a hint of color on the lips. So for the hair, I feel like this period has a very typical, uh, recognizable, distinctive kind of hairstyle. This is the period that Jane Eyre is set in, so any remakes of that movie will have kind of hairstyles of this style. Obviously, young Queen Victoria would have worn things like this in paintings. It is a pretty recognizable hairstyle with the bun midway on the head and the back and then the swoopy bits in front that covered the ears. So I'm going to try and take that hairstyle incorporate it into a more modern wearable look. So to start I am going to split my hair into a center parting and then make two more partings to separate the front of my hair from the back and I'm going to start by clipping away the back for now so that it's out of the way. Now I am going to work with a few hair extensions just because my own hair is pretty thin and I want this to look nice and full. So I'm going to take a strip of hair extensions and apply one small strip on each side of my parting. So I'm starting on one side and I'm going to apply this pretty high up on my head because I'm going to braid this hair and I want all of the extensions to be incorporated into the braid right away so that you won't see the weft when I continue my braid. So to modernize the kind of Victorian swoopy front braids, I am going to actually Dutch braid this. So I'm going to start by separating this hair into three sections and then I'm going to braid them under and take a little bit of hair from the sides every time I do a braid loop thingy. <laughs> so I'm just going to 
keep going straight down until I have incorporated all of my hair and then I'm just going to continue this braid all the way down. And then do the same thing on the other side. So start with a strip of hair extensions here. Feel free to skip this step if your hair is a little bit fuller or um, full enough that you feel this hairstyle looks good enough on you. And then I'm going to make my braid and continue all the way down. So when I have tied off both of my braids on the bottom, I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually fluff these up. And this is again going to pull the Victorian loopy braids into 2018. I'm gonna do the Pinterest braid fluffing. So I'm going to tug on the sides of these braids to make them nice and big. They'll be a lot more wide and kind of voluminous looking this way. So I'm going to do that all the way up the braid. Okay, so back to the back of my hair. I'm going to let this down and again apply a strip of hair extensions, just a single strip. Just want a little bit more fullness. And then I'm going to pull all of this hair back into a ponytail on the center of my head. So when I have that, I'm going to take this ponytail, twist it and create a cinnamon bun. Just a very simple cinnamon bun. And I'm going to pin this with bobby pins as I go along. And when I have pinned my entire bun, it should look something like this. And then I'm going to take one of my braids and I am going to do a little bit of an ear covering swoop. Just because I feel like it wouldn't be Victorian enough if I didn't cover my ears. So <laughs> I'm just going to do it a little bit and hope I can get away with it with it still looking, you know, at least a little bit modern. So I'm just going to pull this braid back and take it underneath that bun, wrap it around and pin it underneath the bun, kind of tuck the ends away and pin it like that. So there's the hairstyle done as well. Now, as for the fashion, I already mentioned the kind of most important pointers are low shoulders, wide neckline, cinched waist and big poofy skirt. So in previous episodes, I have decided to go for jeans or just trousers on the bottom. For this look, I wanted to go for a skirt, again, to kind of emphasize that very distinct hourglass shape. So what I have done is I've taken this top which actually is just a v-neck top with a very loose elasticy neckline so that I can actually pull it over my shoulders, pulled up the sleeves to a three-quarter length. And then underneath I am wearing a actually 50s inspired skirt. The 50s are popular right now, so you can find a lot of these types of skirts in stores. Uh, and I do feel like this works with this style pretty well. Obviously it's way too short for a proper Victorian style, but this is style revival. <laughs> and for my shoes, I went for these lace-up booties. And there you have it, a wearable, modern, early Victorian, 1840s inspired head to toe look. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If there are any historical periods that you would like me to pull into 2018, then please leave a request in the comments below and I will look through, pick one out for next time. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more episodes. If you would like to support me on Patreon, I'll have a link in the description box below. Thank you so much. There will be another video here that you may also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!